Conquest, last argument of kings. Last argument of kings. Welcome. We are going to go into a deep dive on the lore and the models of this actually fantastic game. It really is fantastic. It's got a lot of really cool, unique aspects that I haven't seen in any other game I've played. And I've played a lot of tabletop soldier games, and this is really cool. If you're just joining us, this is Conquest Last Argument of Kings. We have five armies. Parabellum Games, who created this, sent us five fully painted armies. Gorgeously painted by Drakkar Games, I think it's Drakkar, what is it? Drakkar I don't, I don't, Customs or something. Sure. Drakkar. 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 They did a good job. It looks nice, and uh, we get to show it off. Uh, we've played a couple games on the channel now. Mm -hmm. You can go check them out now. Um, it's been all Tycho versus me. Mm. I've won twice. You have. And I've won once. <laughs> so far! <laughs> uh, we'll see but who wins the next one. The Nords are coming. The Nords are coming. The Nords, I've got my house Carl's coming in the next one. It's really good, yeah. really good, really good. If you've never seen this game before, the easiest way to tell you about it is it's really fantasy on square bases. It, it's definitely a fantasy tabletop uh, tactical game where you're trying to outmaneuver your opponent as well as outthink them. It's, it's good. It's good. Now, you may see orcs and dwarves and undead and vikings and the human empire. However, they all have very unique lore and it's actually quite a bit different than what you're used to. For instance, this race right here, you might think, oh, they look like tomb kings. Well, I guess a little bit. That was my first thought when That's I saw good. them. I think it has a lot to do with their paint job, but they are not tomb kings. They are the spire which is actually kind of cool. They are actually an alien race. They're that is, aliens in fantasy. Yes, that have cloned their their best soldiers over and over into like monsters of, well, like their abomination. Like so that-, that This is, giant is, ant? Is, is, a, is, a, is a genetically modified beast of war. Uh, but it's actually a punishment for someone to yeah. be stuck in there yeah. and constantly receive pain. And all it can say is it's moans of anguish as <laughs> it gets herded into battle by the pheromones emanated by the Baromancer. It's a, it's a, they got a lot of really cool ideas uh, built into this ancient race that is flooded with corruption and greed and uh, has some very advanced technology but still will uh, play a part in this, this fantasy, wonderful world of Ea. They have a lot of great little twists on what people know and love in the fantasy world. And I think they've done a really great job at kind of updating and giving the world a lot of like heart and, and meaning by uh, its lore and the depth of its lore. So here before we, before us, as we said, we have five different armies that they sent us. Each race plays very differently. I've now got to experience three different races and each one plays uniquely. Yep. Um, it has some good flavor and the lore behind it does seem fairly deep. As we said, alien, clones, advanced technology, hardly seen in the realm, but they're deciding to come out and actually play a part. We've got the hungry, hungry orcs. Wadrun, Wadrun? Yes. <laughs> Green skins from the wastes that have metabolisms that force them to feed constantly and huge prodigious physical strength. Not a lot of armor. Not a lot of armor. They're, they're very, <laughs> like some of their, some of their uh, tribal and armor kind of seems like, like really old style, like African plains, like Zulu style uh, wicker shields and, and spears. And they've got slingers and they play fast and hard hitting, but die easily. They have some wonderful uh, rules to represent their tribal nature as well. Uh, they, they chant as they, as they march to war. Big and these chants war, can like war, change how their death, units death. function completely, which is pretty cool. They can give themselves upgrades by singing in the correct fashion. And you found out sometimes it's very difficult. It to is get very tough to play these guys well. The rhythm of the yeah. song to line up with how you want the turn yeah. to go. If it all goes right, ooh, watch out. It's very powerful, but very tough to play them. Now, if I understand these correctly, these guys were actually created by someone. They're created race. They were, yes. Are That's, they created I, by these guys? I believe it's unclear, but yes, I do believe they had a hand in it, uh, but they kind of got away from them and ran off into the waste. Kind of rebellion did their own thing. Yes, yes, they did. Um, and actually, well, a lot of these races, the lore goes back far enough to talk about their creation myths of, of, of where the, the different races all came from. Uh, the, the dwarves were created the by Dwegholm. the- Dwegholm. The Dwegholm, right. The dwarves, Dwegholm. The Dwegholm. <laughs> were created by the dragons 
uh, as a slave race, but eventually rose up and slew the greater dragons. And so the dragons are kind of a, a, a forgotten race in the world, mainly because the dwarves killed them all. <laughs> Well, they have cannon, it helps. They have, can uh, they have, they have cannons? Shoulder-mounted cannons? They actually have dragon-mounted cannons. We have, have that model today, but yes. Really? There's, there's a dragon with cannons on, mounted on each side of it. It looks really amazing, cool. yeah. They have automata, yes. fire automata. Yes. Um, they, have, uh, they have a flamethrower, dude. They do. They have all <laughs> sorts of great, fantastic dweg home nastiness. They are accuracy and toughness, and I found I could not hurt those units. Oh, these but are super, you, super tough. You had almost your entire force left. They are fairly slow, though. Well, They're hard to get across the table. Aside from these guys, these guys are fast. Fast, 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 yes. Yeah. But they don't really have, at least so far in the range that I have, that we have in front of us, uh, a lot of cavalry. So I think the, the, the automata take their place. Um, the Hundred Kingdoms are the remnants of a, of, a, of a fallen empire. So the empire has, emperor has died. Guess so. The emperor is dead. But some of their, you know, the imperial troops decided not to give up their great swords. And, I guess no one's decided to argue with them. So uh, yeah, the, the knights and uh, household guard, all sorts of fantastic, very historically flavored. So by Hundred Kingdoms, it's really supposed to be not just one medieval time period kind of thing. It's all these different cultures mixed together right. in one big fantastic unification. So as the range expands, you might see you know different flavors of, of Hundred Kingdoms come out. But definitely, you can definitely do the sort of the, the Western European knight thing uh, and uh, some fantastic ranged units that you use very effectively against. These are cowboys. Yeah. They have cowboy hats. <laughs> They're like rangers. <laughs> Crossbow, crossbow armed cowboys. Longbowmen, crossbows. Yeah, they, they got they got some fantastic sculpts in that range as well. Uh, useful for all sorts of things if you need human warriors. Um, also, the the Nord, which are Vikings par excellence in terms of. Well, it's a bit more than that. It's not just Vikings. It's pretty much the entire Norse mythology. You've got ice trolls. You've got frost giants. You've got. Uggers. 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 Uh, you've My got favorite spelling. The classic Norse berserkers. Like it's just it's in herds. You get in herds. Big piles of them. They're yeah. fantastic. And they have they, they are a bit interesting. They uh, don't quite have the same armor capabilities. Or at least some of them. The house crawls are pretty tough. But they hit like a ton of bricks. They really do. And they're they're fast and they get mean once you hurt them. <laughs> 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 yeah, they, I, I find the most annoying unit to play against is this unit of trolls. Oh, why is that? <laughs> because every turn, they keep regenerating. They oh. regenerate, and so like you do a few wounds to them, they're like, oh yeah, I'm whittling this unit down, and they come back even more. And they have two wounds apiece. These are some of the premier infantry in the entire game. These guys <laughs> can take on anybody. They, you don't hit all that accurately. Though. They're <laughs> kind of big, strong, but yeah. Give me a primer on the overall arcing story. So we have a world, a fantasy world, inhabited by humans and aliens and a couple different races here. Um, there used to be an empire, it collapsed. Yeah, so that was in the past and uh, now the humans are trying to reestablish their, their dominance over the world as the Hundred Kingdoms and they are trying to make peace treaties amongst themselves, obviously with mixed success. <laughs> uh, one of the big problems they are having is a massive invasion from the wastelands in oh, the form yeah. of the Wadroons. The Wadroon have broken through the gate and are pounding into the human empires uh, from a variety of directions and making great headway. So this is uh, an existential threat for the Hundred Kingdoms right now. The Dweg home have been around forever and are scattered amongst their holds and are a bit of a shadow of their former self, but are some of the most formidable individual warriors in the, in the world. Uh, and they are very, very difficult to take on, especially in their home territory where they've been able to fortify and use some of their heavier weapons nice. to guard the passes. Um, the Spire have the potential and the technology to take it all, but they are mired in corruption and greed and their, their society is not, not functioning well together. Uh, a lot they, of opulence. A lot of opulence at the high end and a lot of slave drones on the other end. And the, the, the two camps are, are, are difficult. And the, the, some of the newer, sort of lesser echelons of the, of the highborn, um, well, they want power and influence and money as well. So they've been deciding, well, if I can't get it at home, 
we'll look elsewhere and go expand and, and try and make some, some, some trading pacts with some of the, the races around and see if they can get influence for themselves. And that's created internal strife amongst the, 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 the members of the Spire. Uh, the Nords are always hungry to get, well, away from the wastelands of the north. So <laughs> they they're, are, they're looking to take land to, they, to they, establish yeah, their absolutely. kingdoms. But they're a very fresh group. They, this is the, the youngest of the races. No one really realized that the humans in the far north were actually getting powerful enough and organized enough to be a threat. So this uh, is the... And they obviously made alliance with mythical creatures. Well, yes, there's a whole intricate story because it's not just an alliance, it's in their blood. Uh, oh, so these aren't actually humans? That most of them are. Most of them are. But there's a spectrum. Okay, so and there's so been a lot of intermingling? There's been some magical combining, some intermingling. The the the, the power of the Enjahar um, flows through a lot of them. There's 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 basically it goes it's a it's a big spectrum, but the blooded is for sure got werewolf blood in them. Oh! <laughs> is there werewolves? Oh absolutely. So, yeah, all sorts of wonderful uh, beasts from mythology can be played and purchased for the Nords. So, really, there's a, just a massive world to explore uh, alongside all these amazing models. And that is just before you get to what actually is a really intricate, tactical, and, like, delicate game. Like, there's a, there's, we've had some very interesting matches where it all came down to some very important roles. Or important, important moments. actually not important roles, but important tactical decisions. That's like, true. I can point to a couple places in the last couple games where if I had moved a unit differently, the game would have been different. Absolutely. I made a poor choice and it, it did this, or I made a good choice and it did this. Like, Absolutely. your tactical choices felt really impactful. Yeah, and personally impactful. You made a good choice or a bad choice, yeah. and your opponent can anticipate those and mitigate those sometimes too. With the alternate activation system, you can really work some intricate maneuvers into each turn, and uh, it, it never is a foregone conclusion as to how things are gonna go, which I think is pretty cool. So we've had a couple, as we said, we've had a couple games of this on the channel. We thought you might want to hear what this game is like and what all the factions are. There's more to come apparently. They're actually announced a couple more factions, yes. one of them being Undead Roman legionaries? Well, the old empire that fell. <laughs> there's graveyards full of them. And so, so they're coming back as undead? Absolutely. Who's making them come back as undead? <laughs> well, that might have to remain to be seen. You know? There's all sorts of... Uh, Are we revealing too much here? Uh, we, no, because I don't know enough to reveal. <laughs> <laughs> Now, Parabellum Games actually has been working with us to actually try to develop some of these storylines with us, which is actually kind of cool. Yeah. Um, we were pretty honored when they approached us uh, to showcase their game. I, Absolutely. I, I do enjoy it. Um, I hope we're enjoying it, too. It is a very unique system. It, it feels like it may scratch that itch for some of those fantasy players that lost out on when fantasy, Warhammer Fantasy went to Age of Sigmar. Some of it felt a little betrayed in that moment, and this <laughs> definitely um, is not going to disappoint in that realm. It definitely has that rank and flank mentality to it. When you manage to outmaneuver your foe, it pays off, which is really something that uh, games like this can exemplify that a lot of the yeah. other modern iterations of games do not. <laughs> As of this recording, I have now played three of these factions and played against the other ones. And I think probably my favorite so far, I mean, I can't actually choose. I really like playing the Dweg home because I like the heavy armor and just blast you across the battlefield with cannons. They definitely uh, force mistakes pretty good, don't they? Uh, yeah. Yes, they felt, they felt like a very forgiving army. I made mistakes and it didn't matter as much. <laughs> I enjoyed the Wadroon because of the style. Oh. They look cool. And I so love aggressive. dinosaur riders. Yeah. And aggr the aggressive gameplay is fun. However, not they take a lot of skill to master. I feel, and they're I have not stuff. mastered them yet. Yeah, they're, they're. I guess glass cannon comes to mind. Yeah. They are able to really dish it out, but probably not take the same punches. Yeah. In and then I've also played with the Hundred Kingdoms, mm -hmm. and. Yeah, as humans, you like I love knights, I love halberdiers and crossbowmen and just bows and arrows. I love that feeling. Um, if I was a, if I ever played old fantasy, that would have been my army, Absolutely. the Empire. It gives you that little bit of historical flavor that if you want to like imagine yeah. your your, your I mean, own you, ancestors yes. maybe, yeah, uh, and how they might have gone to war, you I can love, probably find yeah. something in here. I'm a history buff. Yeah. I love uh, I love medieval history in particular, yeah. and it yeah it does satisfy that craving to be able to play medieval fantasy. Right, right. Yeah. Um, I love 
the the Nords for that basically same reason. My people came from the north, and yeah, I don't know. They're your people. They're my people. I still want to see the Nordic beard. I I will try and find somebody. <laughs> braid. It's a, it's a, actually a technical what do you think? skill. Vote in the comments where do you think Tycho should get uh, Viking beard braids? I would love it. And then the little ponytail. I think that oh, would look okay. so cool. I can do the ponytail. The braids and the beard are. are just, <laughs> you need warrior rings to make anyway. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. I um, haven't killed enough people in combat yet. I hope you haven't killed anybody <laughs> in combat yet. <laughs> I was a bouncer for a long time, but I didn't kill anybody. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us. If there's more you want to know about the Conquest universe, um, Taika will answer all your questions. <laughs> Parabellum.com has got more information than I do. Uh, that's we, the website you, that you can... You have done a lot of research. I have. But there is a lot more to know. <laughs> and Parabellum.com and their stuff, um, they, they does seem to be a pretty pretty active community. They do seem to really love their game. Their Discord rocks. They really have quick answers on rules questions and lots of advice on what to put together and how, um, and, and lots of people across the world who are playing this game that would be totally enthused to have uh, any of us join in the conversation and play the game. And actually, we can actually assist, because we have an affiliate link that can get you 10% off, I believe, Ooh. at the Parabellum store. And you support Play on Tabletop, which hey, is always hey, good. Hey, we, we, we need sure the support. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so that... That wraps it up. kind of, yeah. So, uh, so, yeah, until we see you next time in the fantasy, crazy, mixed-up realm of... Yeah. Yeah. Is that E-A-U? E-A with some uh, accents. Play on! Play on.